Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In this PowerShell quick tip, we are going to be looking at the commandlet of get file hash. Let's just get dash file hash. Now, what this actually does is it gets a hash of the contents of the file. So we're going to actually see that the name of the file, the extension of the file does not actually matter in this case. It purely verifies the contents. And this is often used to actually make sure that the file that you're downloading or the zip package that you're downloading is actually authentically what it says it is. Uh, so we're actually going to see an example. We're going to do an example from downloading a file from Notepad++, and we're going to actually make sure that the zip downloaded matches the hash that the website says that it should match. We're also going to be doing some local examples with some text files first. So let's actually go ahead and let's take a look at this commandlet now. So I actually have a text file here. And this text file right now just has the numbers one, two, three, four in there. So what we can actually take a look at here is if we just uh, name this variable hash one, and we're gonna set this equal to get file hash, and we're gonna put in the path here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and we are just going to copy the path to our text file here. If we actually get that, and then we just look at what the hash one is equal, we can actually see the hash of our text file here. Now that we have actually grabbed the hash of our text file, let's go ahead and let's just change that real quick here. And all we're going to do is we're going to make another variable hash two, and we're just going to store that in there again. And we are going to compare our hash one. Uh, so hash two, sorry, we already have hash one up there. So let's look at hash two. Now we actually have this. So if we look at both of these, if we look at hash one and hash two side by side here, we will see that the hash is completely different. And all we did was add one simple character to the text file. So let's actually go ahead and let's restart an example here. And all we're going to do is we're actually going to create a duplicate of our text file here. So we have a test copy. The test copy and the test actually have the exact same contents in there. And what we're actually going to do as well is we're just going to rename the test copy to testcopy.csv. But now that we have all of our content, content is the exact same in both, uh, but the name and extension now has changed. So if we do a hash two, so we're gonna keep hash one equal to our test.txt, and our hash two is gonna be equal to the get file hash testcopy.csv. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to look at the two hashes side by side again here. So let's run this code. And they are identical here. We can actually confirm that they're identical. If we do the hash one dash hash is space dash EQ for equals. And then we do the dollar sign hash two dot hash. And let's see what this equals out to be. This equals out to be true. So Everything is actually working really, really nicely. We can see that these two files, the contents in them is identical. So there's nothing that actually happened in these files. Um, so that's great. And what we can actually even do is if we once again, copy the text file and paste it into a different folder, we can actually also compare this hash now. So if we do a hash three, and we are just going to add, it is a different folder here. So we're going to put test folder. And it is just text, test.txt here. So once we actually run all three of these, and we can actually compare once again, hash one dot hash is equal to hash hash since we already know that if hash one is equal to hash two and hash one is equal to hash three, then hash two and hash three are equals. Um, but let's look at both of these and both of these come out to be true. So 
The file location doesn't matter. The file name doesn't matter. The extension doesn't matter, but the contents fully matter. Uh, now, this is a great tool or a great commandlet to use if you want to monitor files in a specific directory to make sure that nothing ever gets changed in them. Um, now, again, this won't capture name changes, but this will capture the actual content changes. So if someone goes in and maybe does puts a malicious line in your code or something, this would be a way to actually detect to see if the hash ever drifts from the original hash that it should be. So you would take the hash when you first start monitoring it and then constantly monitor that file. And then as soon as the hash changes, you can get alerted by email or any way that you would typically alert if you can put it to an elastic dashboard as well. Uh, so those are all things that you can do. So another thing that I did mention that get file hash is used for is to kind of validate your download uh, integrity. So what we actually have here is I have the uh, Notepad++ website here to download, and they provide you a uh, SHA-256 digest of binary packages. So if you can actually click on this and download what their packages should be as a hash, and you could download the installer portable uh, zip or portable seven zip. So I've actually gone ahead and I've downloaded these. So I've downloaded the hashes that they should be. So if you double click on that file, Windows won't know exactly what to do. So just open it with Notepad++. And we actually have the list of different um, files that you could download from their website and the hash that they should be. So if we actually go look, I downloaded the NPP 8.5 portable x64 zip. Uh, pretty sure it's zip. Yes, I downloaded the zip and not the seven zip. Uh, so I would be looking for this hash here. This would be the hash that I'd be looking for. So let's go ahead. Let's just copy paste this into our PowerShell window. So let's go ahead and let's create a variable here should be. And we're going to make that equal to our string, which is just going to be our hash. And let's go ahead and let's put NPP hash is going to be equal to get file hash. Our path. And now here we're going to put our path of where our file is. So mine is in C users, Jot programmer, downloads, and NPP 8.5 portable.x64.zip. So once we actually get that, we can get both of these here. And we can say NPP hash dot hash is equal to should be. And if we actually just run these here, we will see that we get true. So the download that we did from Notepad++ is actually valid. And it is the proper uh, download that I should be expected. So there's been no man in the middle attacks performed on my download. So this is something that you can definitely do is very useful. They've always recommended to do this, especially if you're downloading something uh, like Kali Linux is a very, very popular one that you should be validating the hash before using it, making sure that the integrity is there. Um, and as I've mentioned also in one of my talking head videos, we are going to be working on a script that will actually monitor files for us. So we're going to be doing it in a script format. And also we're going to be creating a GUI for that as well. So I just wanted to show you guys what the get file hash commandlet is so you guys can play around with the commandlet a little bit before we actually integrate a whole project which really uses this commandlet in more depth here. If you guys have any questions on this commandlet or other commandlets that you guys would like to see me cover, please let me know in the comment section down below. I will do my best to do every single commandlet if it's a commandlet that I need an extra piece of software for, I'll try to get that software or that environment for it and be able to make that video. If you have comments or questions on anything else, please let me know in the comment section as well. I will try to answer all of you guys directly. And if it's something that could benefit a lot of people, I will make a video on it so everyone can benefit from that. Also, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.